Hey guys, I'm Jaden, one of the leaders at Warunga Pathfinders. Today we're doing the Urbana. Requirement number one. Know 25 culinary herbs and their uses. Requirement number two. Know 25 medicinal herbs and their uses. First of all, we have allspice. So the leaves and fruit are used to flavor cooking uh, and it also has antimicrobial properties and was used by Russian soldiers in the Second World War uh, to prevent foot rot. Uh, next we have aloe vera, uh, which is typically used topically for um, burns, cuts, uh, scrapes, rashes, uh, but it can also be um, eaten or distilled into a drink. Uh, next we have anise, uh, which is used to flavour food. Then we have basil, uh, which is also used as a food flavouring. Um, but the flavour is killed quite quickly, so it needs to be added at the end of cooking. Next we have bay leaves. Uh, this is also a food flavouring, uh, but it must be dried for its full flavour to take effect. Next we have a medicinal one, this is cassia, uh, it's used for its laxative properties, usually as a tea. Then we have chamomile, which is also usually used as a tea, um, but it's also used extensively in um, pot potpourri. Um, and it's used for sore stomachs, irritable bowel syndrome and as a sleep aid. Next we have chives, which are once again used in food for flavouring. Uh, usually fish, potatoes and soups. Next we have comfrey, which is used to speed up the healing of wounds as a topical application. Then we have coriander, uh, which is used as a flavouring. We have cowslip, uh, which is a diuretic, uh, which means it makes you pee. And then we have curry leaves, uh, which are used for flavouring curries. Um, and then there's dandelion. The whole plant is actually edible. Uh, it's used as an anti-inflammatory um, and may also be eaten as a salad vegetable or used in teas. Uh, we have eyebright, uh, which is used to relieve eye strain and is also an anti-inflammatory uh, for coughs and colds, as well as sinus infections. Uh, then we have eucalyptus oil, which is a natural disinfectant and is usually used topically. Next we have garlic, which is used as a flavouring and antibacterial. Uh, then we have horseradish. So most of the wasabi you get outside of Japan is just horseradish, horseradish in disguise and it's used as a vegetable or condiment. Next we have hyssop. Uh, which has a bitter minty flavour. Uh, it's used as a cough medicine and an anti-inflammatory. And it's also used to increase uh, blood flow to the skin. Next we have lemongrass, uh, which is used as a flavouring in teas, soups and curries. Then we have one of my personal favourites, licorice. It's used as cough medicine and is also used as a flavouring. Then we have the various types of mint, so both spearmint and peppermint, as well as other members of the mint family, are used in flavourings. Next, we have the mulein family. Uh, they're used as a flavouring in alcohols, as well as used as an expectorant for coughs and colds. Next, we have parsley. So, there are two main types of parsley uh, that most people would recognise. There's the curly and the flat leaf varieties. Uh, both are used as flavouring in savoury cooking as well as garnishes. Uh, next we have purslane. Uh, so the tea is used to treat constipation and urinary tract infections. Then we have another one of my personal favourites, rose hips. Um, they're used to make teas as well as jams. And then we have rosemary. Uh, rosemary uh, is used 
in Mediterranean cooking and it also has anti-inflammatory properties. Then we have saffron. Uh, it's used as a flavoring and also as a food dye. Then we have sage, uh, which is used for its peppery flavor and is an antifungal. Uh, then we have sorrel, uh, which is used as a laxative uh, and it's also used as a salad vegetable because of its sharp uh, citrusy flavor. Next we have thyme, spelled T-H-Y-M-E. Uh, it's used as a flavoring in soups and stews and it's also used uh, for sore throats and as an antiseptic. Requirement number three. Name and identify five herbs growing wild near you. Okay, for our next requirement, we have to identify five herbs that grow in our local area. Um, so I went for a walk and this is what I found. I have some chickweed. So this is a salad herb that you can use, it's edible. Uh, it's quite common in lawns and gardens. Next I have speedwell, uh, which is a medicinal herb used as a diuretic and antibacterial. Um, next I found some shepherd's purse. Uh, so this grows flat on the ground and it um, has seed pods on stalks that look like little hearts. And it's used as a tea for menstrual cramps and also to alleviate low blood pressure and headaches. Uh, next, I have an Australian native. This is uh, comelina. Uh, so this is a salad herb. And it was given by the Aborigines to the first fleet um, when they rocked up in Sydney Cove um, in order to cure them of scurvy. Um, next I found some ribwort, uh, this is also known as the common plantain. Uh, so it's been used for thousands of years as a wound dressing uh, for its antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. Um, it's also been used for thousands of years um, to cure digestive problems and fever. Uh, it's widely regarded as one of the most medicinal plants on the planet. Um, next, I have uh, the good old dandelion. So these, um, as we learnt earlier, can be used as a salad herb. Uh, every single part of this plant is edible. Um, they're really great. Uh, next, I have some sorrel. So this is sheep sorrel. Um, the image I showed you earlier was wood sorrel. Uh, this is sheep sorrel. And then last but not least, I have mallow. Uh, so mallow is also used as a salad leaf and as a garnish. Uh, its medicinal properties include um, as a tea for use to cure sore throats. And it's also used topically as an antimicrobial and antifungal. Requirement number four. Name five herbs used for dyeing and their colour. We've got poke, which produces a pink dye. We've got dandelion, which produces a red dye. We've got sunflowers, which produce an orange dye. Uh, you can get a green dye out of rosemary. Uh, you can get purple dye out of geranium flowers and a brown dye out of the plant part of the fennel. Requirement number five. Name five herbs used for insect control. So five herbs used for insect control. So basil is used to control flies. Garlic can control mosquitoes. Lavender uh, is used for moths. Mint can be used for aphids and cabbage moth, and rosemary is just a general, all-around good one to deal with garden pests. Requirement number six. Name five herbs that attract bees. 
five herbs that are particularly useful for bees. So all the plants in the mint family are highly attractive to bees, as is basil, lavender, echinacea, and dandelions. Requirement number seven. Make a pomander and potpourri. A pomander uh, is, is and was traditionally used uh, to ward off bad smells uh, during the time of the plagues. A simple pomander that we can make uh, consists of an orange and some whole cloves. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our cloves and we're going to poke them into our orange like so. Uh, and we just do that all the way around. And uh, then we can put it anywhere we want to get rid of some bad smells. And that will do the job. The other thing we can use for uh, making our place smell nice is potpourri. So potpourri uh, is traditionally made of dried plant material that retains its scent. So things that you can include in a potpourri uh, include things like lavender, rosemary, um, sandalwood, other, um, other woods and barks that retain their smell such as cinnamon and camphor. Most modern potpourri that you can buy uh, is bulked up by use of flower petals with um, scents that have been sprayed onto them with a fixative. Um, yeah, so one of your requirements is you're going to have to make a potpourri. It's homework time! One, complete your worksheet. Two, make a dish using herbs. Three, grow five herbs. Four, make a pomander and some potpourri. And number five, you need to make one other herbal product.